Hello students, welcome to Government Science College, Bangalore. Welcome, hearty welcome to the Department of Botany and PG Studies to the first BSc, first semester students. This paper, paper one, is having the title Introduction to Microbiology, Viruses, Bacteria, Cyanobacteria and Phycology. I'm Dr. B.S. Jotsna, who will be who will be teaching unit one and we'll proceed with today's topic that is introduction scope and branches of microbiology. Now what is microbiology? If we break up the word microbiology, micro is small, bio is living, logy is study of. Microbiology is the discipline of science which deals with the laws of life and development of organisms particularly microscopic to submicroscopic forms of life which are invisible to naked light. Now, it is one of the largest and most complex of biological sciences because it deals with different diverse biological disciplines. It deals with every aspect of the micro-human-environmental interaction. Now, microbiology is that branch of science that deals with microbes, that is, microscopic forms of life. Microbiology deals not only with that, it also deals with the form, structure, physiology, reproduction, metabolism, classification of microorganisms, how useful they are and what are their harmful relationships with other living things, how and what significance they play, what's the role they play, what is the usefulness in science, medicine, industry, and what are their beneficial and harmful effects on human beings, domestic animals, and cultivated plants. Now, microbes or microorganisms, which we name it as, are invisible creatures too small to be seen with the naked eye. They can be seen only by magnifying their image with a microscope. Hence, they are known as microorganisms. Now, what are these microorganisms? They include viruses, bacteria, algae, fungi, and protozoans. Now, these microorganisms or microbes are widely distributed in the world. They are omnipresent, which means they are present everywhere. They are present in air, water, soil, in living plants, animals, including dead matter. They are distributed in the Arctic regions. They are seen in hot tropical areas, forest, frosty atmospheres, and even in arid, that is dry regions. They are present on our body. They are present inside our body. They are present on our clothing, the air we breathe, in the food we eat, in the water we drink and even in our mouth and in our intestine. So, they actually make up one third of the dry weight of human fecus, that is bacteria is made up of that. Now, based on their levels of organization, we can just broadly describe these microbes as unicellular when they are made up of only single cells, example, protozoa bacteria. They are multicellular when they are made up of many cells, example, algae and fungi. Or they may lack even a cellular structure, that is non-cellular forms, example, viruses. Now, based on the presence or absence of the nuclear membrane, microbes are classified in two categories, that is prokaryotes, which do not have any nuclear membrane, and the nuclear membranes are not separated, and they are just suspended. And this type of nuclear membranes or nuclear materials without the nuclear membrane is called nucleoid or incipient nucleus. Examples of prokaryotes are bacteria, blue-green algae, and eukaryotes. Eukaryotes are those microbes like protozoa, algae, fungi, which have a nucleus. That is, they are bounded by a nuclear membrane and they are separated from the cytoplasm. As you can see from this picture, you have a beautiful picture of bacteria. You have the spiral bacteria, the rod-shaped bacteria, which is called the bacillus. You have algae, example, chlamydomonas, spirogyra. In protozoans, we see the picture of amoeba and paramecium. 
and in fungi we can see the picture of bread mold penicillium aspergillus and on the right hand side you can see a beautiful picture showing the phages you can see mushroom you can see the green cells that is the yeast cells and in the center that brushy appearance is the penicillium now just to give a brief introduction about the history of microbiology microbiology began with the discovery of microorganisms way back to 1674 by anthony von leeuwenhoek who is known as the father of microbiology he was basically a amateur lens grinder in holland he used to make his own microscopes and he was the person who threw light for the existence of new world of microorganisms in mouth food and stagnant water he observed bacteria and he named them as animal cules in the year 1878 said a lot was the person who proposed the term microbe and it was in the year 1884 koch has postulated his important postulates and in the year 1885 we have louis pasteur who has proposed the theory of spontaneous generation of life and he has developed the vaccine for rabies in the year 1892 avinovsky has described the plant virus the first plant virus that is tobacco mosaic virus and it was ronald ross in the year 1898 who discovered the malarial parasite in the salivary glands of anopheles mosquito where he described about the malarial parasite in the year 1902 landsteiner discovers about the blood groups and in the year 1929 alexander fleming has discovered the famous antibiotic penicillin he is known as the father of antibiotics and the most important even in molecular biology goes to james watson and francis crick who proposed the double helical structure of dna now we just go to the next topic of our class that is scope of microbiology now what is scope of microbiology what are the areas where we can highlight about the importance of microbiology now these microorganisms have gained tremendous significance and they have been increasing their recognition because of the economic importance of their roles they play they helpful they are helpful in the development of new techniques today microorganisms have become basic tools of genetic engineering and biotechnology so we'll just briefly tell you what is the scope of microbiology if we start with uh, you can see in the slide we have microorganisms and principles of biology now what exactly is this microorganisms and principles of biology here we study the metabolic patterns and the life processes of microorganisms and the different stages of their growth and development here we get to know about the various principles of biology and what are their characteristics and what is the role they play the biological phenomenon next is medical microbiology and immunology this throws light on the basic knowledge of the lab diagnosis we do and the prevention of microbial diseases soil microbiology what is soil microbiology it deals with the role of microorganisms in soil which help to decompose and mineralize industrial microbiology deals with the utility of microorganisms for the industrial production of medicines food supplements beverages etc food microbiology is relationship of microbes to the manufacture deterioration that is spoilage and preservation of food milk and milk product microbiology deals with the role of microbes in milk and milk products water microbiology the role of microbes in water and sewage microbiology the role of microbes in sewage treatment in addition to this you can also know the scope of microbiology where we get to know about the biogeochemical cycles now biogeochemical cycles is the flow of chemicals between living and non living things where microbes decompose the dead plants and animals into simple chemical nutrients that are used by plants and photosynthetic organisms plants use up this chemical nutrients incorporate them into complex organic compounds which is the ultimate source of food for our animals and when these plants and animals die the microorganisms decompose these complex organic compounds of the dead bodies into simple chemical nutrients 
So this cycling of the nutrients takes place in the earth and this is called biogeochemical cycles. In addition to this, we also have the role or the scope of microbiology in cellulose digestion, ruminants. Ruminants cannot digest cellulose present in plants, hence because they don't have the enzyme cellulase. So the stomach of ruminants contains microbes which help in the digestion of cellulose. And these ruminants would starve and die if it is not being, if the ruminants are deprived of these microbes, the ruminants would starve and die. Now food production as we have done in the previous slide, food production is how our foods are actually the byproducts of microbial growth. For example, production of cheese, production of yogurt, all these are examples of food production. Next, we go to energy production, that is microorganisms and energy. Microbial methane generators are used to convert manure to combustible fuel for powering vehicles and heater, heaters. Biological fuel generators converts our waste into usable energy to supply power for residential communities and industry. Now, when we come to microorganisms and industry, that is industrial microbiology, here microorganisms are used extensively in industries to produce products which are useful for mankind. They include fermented products, alcoholic beverages, beverages like wine, beer, uh, beer whiskey, then we have antibiotics, we have pharmaceuticals, vaccines, vitamins, organic acids, amino acids, etc. And what is the role of microbiology in medicine? Here, microbes and microbial products are of great significance in medicine because important drugs synthesized by the microorganisms are antibiotics like penicillin, streptomycin, chloramphenicol, steroids, etc. Now, microbes in pesticides. What are the role of microbes? Certain microbes like bacteria, fungi, viruses, and even some nematodes are used to infect and kill insects. They are called microbial pesticides or biopesticides. Now, what is the role of microbes in the improvement of soil that we did in the previous slide, that is soil microbiology? So most of the bacteria and fungi live saprophytically on dead organic matter. They decompose this complex organic matter into simple substances and by doing so, they decay and bring about different digestive and respiratory process. This simple substances is called humus, which is an important constituent of soil. Blue-green algae like nostoc and abena are employed in the reclamation of alkaline user soil. Certain microorganisms are also used to increase the fertility of the soil. As all of us know, the rhizobium uh, is a good example of nitrogen-fixing bacteria in addition to nitrosomonas and nitrobacter. Now, what is the role of microbes in sanitation? Many microbes like bacteria, fungi and protozoans are used in the improvement of sanitary methods. They act on the solids, semi-solids of sewage and decompose them. Microbes also play a major role in retting of fibers. Retting is a process where plant fibers such as coconut husk, hemp, jute are separated by the activity of microorganisms. These materials are immersed in water and during this process they absorb and swell. The water medium contains matter which is rich in bacterium that is clostridium which helps to hydrolyze these pectic substances. Now, what is the role of microbes in genetic engineering? Genetic engineering is a technique which involves the use of microorganism. By using genetic engineering technique, recombinant DNA is produced and by applying this technique, certain important events like NIF genes, that is nitrogen fixing genes, are transferred from nitrogen fixing bacteria to cultivated plants. Next, biomining. What is meant by biomining? Microbes are used in the extraction of metals like uranium from rocks. Pseudomonas and baker's yeast are used to absorb such heavy metals. Next, use of microbes in mining also is cost productive. Now, coming briefly to the branches of microbiology. Branches of microbiology are bacteriology, which deals with the study of bacteria, mycology, study of fungi, protozoology, study of protozoans, virology, study of virus and viral diseases, 
algology or phycology deals with study of algae parasitology study of parasites microbial ecology as the name signifies it studies the interrelationships between microbes and environment microbial morphology it is in the definition itself where it deals with the structure or morphology of the microorganism microbial taxonomy deals with the identification naming and classification of microorganism microbial physiology deals with the study of metabolism at cellular and molecular levels microbial genetics and molecular biology it deals with the genetic material structure function and biochemical reaction of microbial cells involved in metabolism and growth now this picture gives you the role of microorganisms of pharmaceutical interest you can see molds you can see yeast you can see a petri plate showing the growth of fungus and the rod shaped bacteria continuing with the branches of applied microbiology applied microbiology is industrial microbiology where we use the microbes in the industrial production of alcoholic beverages as we have explained now enzymes antibiotics agricultural microbiology is the role of microbes uh, in the control of plant diseases and improvement of yield of plants food microbiology interaction of microorganism with relations to food food spoilage food borne diseases and dairy microbiology deals with the production and maintenance of quality control for dairy products aquatic or water microbiology the study of microorganisms in fresh waters marine waters and modern biotechnology as the name signifies deals with the construction of microorganisms with specific genetic characters by use of technology called recombinant dna technology for industrial purposes we have other branches of applied microbiology like aeromicrobiology that is the study of aerospora that is the distribution of microorganisms in air exomicro biology that is the exploration of microbial life in outer space medical microbiology it deals with the causative organisms causing diseases diagnosis of them what are the diagnosis and the preventive measures immunology it deals with the immune system which protects us from infections and public health microbiology deals with the monitoring control and spread of communicable diseases in the community. as you can see in the picture the first picture shows a petri plate showing the growth of molds of fungi second picture you can see a person doing the shrieking or growth of bacteria in a petri plate you can see the observation of the molds under the microscope here and a bacterial culture which is shown here on the right hand side this is the references you can do for preparation of notes Thank you.